Can you believe it's been 10 years since Skyrim first release? Since we first booted this game up on PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360 all the way back in 2011, a lot has changed to the game. We've had three DLCs, a special edition remaster in 2016, adding new visual features for PS4 and Xbox One like volumetric effects and depth of field. We've had the integration of fan mods and even Bethesda's own creation club, adding extra bits of content to the game. 10 years on though, and we're here to celebrate. Bethesda seem fit to release a so-called anniversary edition, bundling all the best of Skyrim into one package. For our interests, the anniversary release now means PS5, Xbox Series X and S have an official release, true native apps rather than running the PS4 and Xbox One versions in backwards compatibility. 60fps is officially included this time, visuals are promised to be upgraded, while loading times are much improved. So how much of an upgrade is it really over the previous release, and is this now the ultimate Skyrim experience? A quick refresh on the story so far. Of course, Skyrim fans have had a decent upgrade on PS5 and Xbox Series systems already, just by running on more powerful systems. On PS5, we've enjoyed the game at a near locked 60fps thanks to a fan mod, allowing the frame rate to break free from the PS4 Pro's 30fps limit. And more impressively still, PS5 retained a 4K image while doing it. On the Xbox side, we have a similar 60fps mod, but that then gave way to the FPS boost feature on Xbox, which achieves essentially the same thing. FPS boost or mod, you have 4K at 60fps on Series X, and 1080p at 60fps on Series S. With the arrival of the Anniversary Edition, we can put the 60fps mod back in the cupboard. We can brush Microsoft's FPS boost feature under the bed. This time, it's all official. 60fps is on PS5, Series X and S as standard, no extra tinkering, and not only that, but there are select other improvements along the way. So what are the main features of Anniversary Edition? In a nutshell, it pairs the Special Edition remaster we already have with all three DLCs, that being Dawnguard, Hearthfire and Dragonborn. As mentioned, you get next-gen upgrades too, though this update is free to anybody who already owns Special Edition on PS4 for example. The main distinguishing point for Anniversary Edition is the content you get as standard, with big features from Bethesda's Creation Club added. There's the Saints and Seducers side quests, plus rare new items. You get an optional survival mode too, turning Skyrim into a kind of high difficulty survival sim in the vein of Ark Survival Evolved. There's no health regen in this mode, you can't fast travel, you also have to look closely at your armor for the warmth stat to brave colder climbs, or stand near bonfires to warm up. Also, factors like fatigue and hunger affect stamina and magic bars here disease-ridden creatures, freezing cold water, and also carrying an unrealistic number of items are to be avoided too. So again, brutally difficult, all small touches, purely mechanical, but it is nice to have. And of course, we have a new, exhilarating fishing minigame too. Okay, so what are the next-gen improvements? Honestly, the biggest surprise to me is the state of loading times. Skyrim almost demands that you revert to previous save states to get through tricky dungeons, and certainly using fast travel between areas of Tamriel. By optimizing the creation engine for the faster NVMe SSD bandwidth on PS5 and Xbox then, we have a significant upgrade. So, in example, we have PS5 hardware on both sides of this comparison, on left, running the PS4 Pro app via Back and Pat, of course. On right, the new PS5 optimized app. And as you can see, the saving is pretty huge. Loading a new game puts us at 2.6 seconds on PS5, up against the 15 seconds running the older PS4 app. It's a pretty colossal saving that bears out in moving to new areas as well. In first emerging to Skyrim, for example, after the tutorial, you're in action after 2.6 seconds again on PS5's native app, up against 17 on the older PS4 app. 
Of all the upgrades, this, to me anyway, felt like the most satisfying. A look at the Xbox Series X and S in comparison to PS5, just for the sake of thoroughness, all running on new native apps, shows PS5 is marginally in the lead, but new Xbox consoles still get a solid 4-5 to five second result. The next big question, what are visual upgrades in the Anniversary Edition? How does the updated PS5 and Series X game compare to, say, the best case previously? That being the last gen app with a 60fps mod or FPS boost in place. For the sake of comparison, I'm using the 60fps mod on the left side, but for Xbox consoles this will be identical to what FPS boost delivered as well. The turnout, well, Anniversary Edition pushes the same effects, quality, texture resolution, and even object and tree draw as before. There's potentially improved anisotropic filtering on the floor, but foliage above it is identical, if in a randomised pattern. For a console like Series S though, you may notice some changes in overall clarity though. That is, if we engage zoom right here. The reason? Well, Series S has a respectable resolution boost on the new edition to a dynamic 1440p. This ranges from 2560 by 1440 down to 1792 by 1440, always scaling on that horizontal axis, but making it a great upgrade on the fixed 1080p on the original code base on left. Looking to the two premium machines next, starting with Series X, there are more changes still. Series X is now a fully dynamic 4K thanks to the anniversary update specifically. This takes us from 3840 by 2160 at best looking at the sky right down to around 2560 by 2160 in taxing moments like dragon battles. Lots of GPU compute sapping alpha effects pull it to the lower figure which is essentially 66% of a full 4K. Now this is a revolution over the way it worked before on Series X. The older pre-anniversary code on left, even running the 60fps mod or FPS boost, ran with a fixed 4K resolution. In effect, you may see some instances as a result where the anniversary edition looks softer, but it makes sense. The first entrance to the open world is a demanding sprawl that triggers DRS below 4K now on Series X, but you'd be hard pressed to spot it in practice. All other visuals are identical, textures, effects, foliage draw, plus the new dynamic scaling on Series X does have a benefit for frame rates, as we'll get to. Last up is PS5. Last because fundamentally PS5 is unchanged in its raw pixel metrics. The anniversary update runs at a fixed 3840x2160 on PS5, no signs of DRS, so just like running the older code on the 60fps mod on left, you'll see similar obvious frame rate drops. Again, all settings are largely unchanged in direct comparison. It also inevitably means PS5 now pushes a clearer image than Series X on the anniversary update, as a result of it keeping a fixed 4K pixel structure. Resolution is the only point to really divide the two otherwise though. Series X will use DRS to salvage performance where necessary, at a cost to image clarity as we first emerge to Skyrim. This 400% zoom gives you an exaggerated sense of what I mean, but again it takes a serious close up to spot a difference in PS5's favour. PS5 also doesn't get away unscathed from frame rate drops as a result, as we can see moving to performance tests. Let's kick off with PS5 frame rate tests. Given the lack of change in targeting a fixed 4K, we see very comparable results to the 60fps mod. Mostly it's perfect, 60fps all the way through the beautiful flourishing valleys, the open environment Skyrim is so well known for, and likewise dungeons run without a hitch. The outlier for this engine is the dragon battles. Fire Alpha runs at full resolution and so, combined with PS5's native 4K image, overlaying the alpha effect like this cues a memory bandwidth bottleneck, resulting in drop frames. Down we go to around 50fps using the 60fps mod, occasionally into the high 40s. Now accepting this is a stress test, it's not a catastrophe. This really is exceptional. So moving over to the anniversary edition update, the results are pretty much the same. A solid 60fps everywhere you might turn, except of course for this dragon battle outside a turret near Whiterun. 
The Alpha FX again cue a near identical drop to the 50 FPS line. Outside of these areas, I must say PS5 is looking pretty strong, even at a fixed 4K. There's barely an issue for interior areas, dungeons that funnel you through tight corridors, and all round, there's very little upgrade or downgrade over the previous codebase. Curiously, the Anniversary Edition update also affects the PS4 Pro native app when running on a PS5, enabling that app to unlock to 60fps too. So, in other words, no matter which app you choose, you'll now officially have 60fps enabled without the need for that mod. The preference between the two apps is clear though because of the loading time advantage on the PS5 app, though otherwise there's little to report on this. There's no haptic feedback or adaptive trigger support on PS5, which I think is a bit of a pity. The fishing minigame, even drawing an arrow, would have been a perfect use for it, but alas, not this time. PS5's performance is at least largely solid at 4K, but the Xbox consoles go one further. Starting with Series X, it must be said performance gets a more obvious upgrade. Here's our first encounter with the Dragon on the older code using the 60fps mod. Down it goes to around 40fps, a pretty huge drop all told, but then when we switch to the new Anniversary Edition with its dynamic 4K, the frame rate hit is minimised to just a brief drop to 50fps. Series X benefits from DRS even if it's clearly not perfect. And again, much like PS5, there's barely an issue running unbounded at 60fps on a 12 teraflop machine a decade on from the game's first launch. A dynamic 4K at 60fps? No problem. Barring a small drop in these rare moments, even the turret battle, it's more than capable. Finally, let's see how Series S fares with its new dynamic 1440p setup. To be honest, we're only seeing marginal improvements when it comes to the frame rate side. The older code with a 60fps mod in place dropped to the low 50s before, facing the dragon head on, and switching to the anniversary update were in the same ballpark roughly. Fundamentally, it still drops to the low 50s when really pushed, but a bulk of play runs perfectly on Series S. The 10 years since Skyrim first released have brought so much change to the game. I doubt this is the last update we'll see either, it being one of Bethesda's most celebrated creations. Still, it does highlight a need to see similar attention paid to the Fallout series on current gen, and hopefully soon for the likes of Fallout 4. As for Skyrim, many of the additions in this anniversary edition are more mechanical in nature, the Creation Club extras, whereas the hardware-specific upgrades on PS5 and Series X aren't radical. Loading times are easily the biggest boon to running the new native PS5 or series console apps. And of course, the good news is if you own the special edition already, you'll get these upgrades for free. As a release, the anniversary edition streamlines what we already had. The 60fps mods, the FPS boost feature on Xbox, are no longer needed going forward, and I'm glad to see Bethesda taking charge of its code with an official route to 60. But that's all we have time for today. If you enjoyed this quick look at Skyrim Anniversary Edition, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.